John 16, verses 12 to 15. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. We moved to Spalding just before the flower parades came to an end. People frequently told us then that it was not like it was. I enjoyed watching the parade, but it was pretty obvious that it couldn't continue for much longer. It was costing the council too much money and it had lost its original purpose, which was to showcase the tulips for which Spalding was famous, but which were no longer grown commercially in this area. I do still read comments on Facebook from people saying that they, I'm not quite sure who the they is, should never have stopped the flower parade and recalling all the thousands of people who used to visit the town and what a wonderful weekend it was. And of course, I understand their feelings, their nostalgia, but times have changed. Christian faith is based on what Jesus Christ said and did 2,000 years ago. He saw himself as standing in an even older tradition than that went back through the prophets of Israel, Moses, Abraham, and to the beginning of creation. Those who followed Jesus saw him as the fulfillment of all that had gone before, and as the way, the truth, and the life that was new. Those words from John's Gospel with which I began, Jesus speaks about the coming of the Spirit of Truth, who will guide us into all the truth. Christian faith is based on Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, we have accounts of his life and teaching and the letters written by St. Paul and other missionary leaders of the early church. Very quickly, the apostles had to explain who Jesus was and what he did to people whose background and understanding was different from those who had seen the miracles of Jesus in the towns around the Lake of Galilee or heard him arguing with the religious leaders in the temple in Jerusalem. The apostles needed to convey the meaning of the crucifixion and the impact of the resurrection of Jesus on their own lives and on the lives of fellow believers. St Paul coined new expressions. He gave new meanings to words and phrases that came from ancient philosophy and pagan religion. He baptised language to express something that was both a development from what people already knew and something quite different from their previous experience. And the process didn't stop with the New Testament. From the first centuries of the church, the implications of what Christians believe about Jesus Christ were continually thought through and worked out in different places and times. There were soon disagreements about how Jesus related to God, the Father, and how the Holy Spirit related to them both, and about the way in which Jesus Christ was both a real human being and also fully God. It led to a number of gatherings of bishops from around the world who argued back and forth for many weeks until a consensus could be hammered out. Christian faith is based on Jesus Christ. Our understanding of the truth about Jesus isn't the same as those who knew him or heard him speak in a shared language that is foreign to us.
It's not the same as those who wrote about him and shared their understanding of him using the words and ideas that made sense in the past. What Christians believe today isn't exactly the same as what Christians believed a hundred or five hundred or a thousand years ago because we don't see the world in the same way. Although Jesus was an historical figure, a man who lived in a small Jewish town for most of his life, that doesn't limit him to a faraway time and place. If Jesus Christ lived in Spalding in 2021, we would still recognise him as the embodiment of the love of God. He would still show the same compassion for those who are vulnerable and the same challenge to the status quo that protects the powerful and enshrines injustice. He would still speak for God. And that would be a challenge, not just to the world, but for all Christians. There are many traditions within the church, each emphasising a different aspect of how Christian understanding has developed. And Jesus would tell us that we haven't got it right. We've not yet fully grasped who he was and we've not gone nearly far enough in living out what he taught and indeed what we say we believe. Although Jesus isn't physically present anymore, the Holy Spirit is with us and he is still guiding us. He is prompting us to discover the truth. It's natural to look back and to remember often selectively aspects of the past that have gone. But Jesus Christ doesn't live in the past. He is always in the present. He wants us to recognise God's love for the world here and now. And he wants us to live the truth today.